Good morning, folks, starting today with the line between small stars and brown dwarfs. Star water students will recognize that their exoplanet habitability views surrounding brown dwarfs are perhaps narrow, and they describe how brown dwarfs cool into macro dark matter, which jives not with the electric universe theories or logic. The dark energy and dark matter they talk about these days is the result of them missing over 90% of the universe in their equations, so they literally made up the filler. Anyway, bit of a concern in orbit as a cooling pump was shut down on the ISS. It's not their only one, but they'll focus on fixes for that vital vessel component for certain. Cool little map out of NOAA today, showing average white Christmas likelihoods. Easy enough to understand, and we'll see what this year brings. First, we're hopping back a month to November for the official State of the Climate Report. Always takes a week or two into the next month for release. Had some extreme events at various locations in the U.S. We're going to quickly take a look at some of the maps they have available. These reports are outstanding for piecing together monthly pictures of climate events. They always have their metrics broken down nationally, regionally, and by state, along with looking at one month, seasonal, and yearly totals for precipitation and temperature. We're going to focus on temperature at the regional level for November. Good mix there. As I go back to season, half year and year deviations, you can see we've bounced back and forth across the baseline a bit. Anyway, kicking it to the measurement mission where I must admit that my flash, flood, and landslide worries for these areas have not gone away. Same locations, day after day under the gun. You can see the next convergence lines about to crest onto Europe, bringing the next set. Yesterday I remarked how cold Eastern Europe must be, but it's not just them. That cold shifts south all the way to the promised land. Significant cold and snow event is ongoing. As we know, the southern hemisphere lows drive clockwise with a leading east convergence swinging up towards the equator. You can see the cloud pop-ups where Antarctic chill smashes into equatorial moisture. The line has produced severe hailstorms and the central cell has hit New Zealand today. One last look at Medea before the cyclone hits the Indian coastline here. West coast weather will be dictated again today by the encroaching low. Solar wind density, speed, and plasma temperature are dropping and at low stable levels. The conditions are calm as the KP index confirms. We have some flare signatures that we'll come back to momentarily, but as per the usual, ASSA and NOAA do not agree on sunspot class and they only do it once a day, which is often not enough to capture significant morphology. That's why we classify them on our own. Looking to the southern incomers, technically these get gamma class because we have beta polarity umbral groups that cannot be segregated by a continuous line. But I wouldn't expect large flaring unless we get a delta development at the backside. Up north, the umbral cores are huge, but there is absolutely no complexity. These are all negative umbras and not dangerous as of now. So what about the flares you did see? They appeared to be post-filament release flaring rather than causative flaring from sunspot instability. Take a point away from the sunspots and hand it to the Earth-directed CMEs. It's early, but with Earth off to the left here on Stereo A, we do have a good chance of getting glancing blows or up to maybe a moderate magnetic storm. As for the quakes, every day that I'm ready to raise the watch score over 7, the power either drops off or the field shift around, like here. We're also missing 16 hours of yesterday's fields, and no, didn't raise the watch score last night either. Let's get shots of our star to close, including the iris rasters. Eyes open, no fear, it's 6.45am Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.